Hello and welcome to Cheap Shot Entertainment. This is your Retro Reviews segment and we're going into February 2003. It is No Way Out 2003. February 23rd in fact. And this pay-per-view hailed from the Bell Centre in Montreal. This is the first pay-per-view, the first show since the infamous screw job in 1997 for the return of WWE to Montreal uh, in Quebec, Canada. And there were several references to this during the show, but most notably, even though Shawn Michaels was an active wrestler at this time, winning the championship just four months earlier, he was not on the show. Probably for his own protection, uh, the Canadians hold a grudge, shall we say. Uh, got a good pay-per-view buys. It's the fourth biggest pay-per-view in, in pay-per-view buy, buys behind WrestleMania, SummerSlam and Royal Rumble. And uh, we get commentary from Jonathan Coachman and Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, Jim Ross was out with a concussion due to an attack the previous week on Raw. We've got uh, quite a big show, bigger than most uh, in terms of No Way Out here. We've got Hawk Rock 2 and that obviously was a rematch from WrestleMania 18. Huge match, it sends shivers down my spine every time I think about that match. It was absolutely brilliant. Stone Cold Steve Austin returns for the first time since the summer of 2002 when he took his ball and went home. Triple H defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Scott Steiner returning to the WWE after, well, I mean it's a good 10 years since he was in the company um, and he was quite big on WCW and that went under William Regal. And Lance Storm defend the Tag Team Championship against Kane and Rob Van Dam. And Matt Hardy challenges Billy Billy Kidman for the Cruiserweight Championship on this card. So, yeah, we've got a lot to get through. So, we're going to go into the first match now. So the first match we get is Jericho, Chris Jericho versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, two absolute veterans and they put on a really good show here. The fight over a, an early advantage in this match. Chris Jericho gets overzealous, hits his head on the top of the post and it is really easy to do, believe me. Um, to the point where I've nearly done it a couple of tra- times in training with Aspire Wrestling Alliance. Follow them on Facebook. And, um, yeah, so Jericho is slightly busted open. Uh, Jeff Hardy goes for a high-flying move, hits the first one, disappears around the other side of the ring, tries the walk across the barricade. Uh, Jericho ducks this. Uh, Jeff Hardy misses and Jericho pancakes him into the steel steps and the tide turns there. Uh, Jericho all the way through uh, on top of Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has a mini comeback and the crowd here is absolutely raucous. Remember we're in Montreal, Canada. So they are going to be cheering for Chris Jericho and cheer for Chris Jericho. They do indeed. Because every time Jeff Hardy does something, he even hits the reverse twist of fate on Jericho and goes to the top. Usually gets a big pop. Not this time. They were booing the face paint off of Jeff Hardy on this one. Jeff Hardy ultimately misses. Jericho hits the line salt to a raucous applause. Jeff Hardy kicks out to a raucous amount of boos. And... Uh, yeah, we we continue the match. The match would finish with Jericho using the walls of Jericho, quite apt really for the first match 
back in Montreal, a submission by a Canadian on an American. Uh, turnabout is fair play, as they would say. And, uh, yeah, that is your lot. Jeff Hardy taps out. I'm going to give this a really good score, actually, for an opening match, especially one that, you know, we're on the road to WrestleMania 19. Great show that was as well. Uh, and it's usually quite difficult to see how the pay-per-view between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania fits in, but fits in this does very well. And I'm going to give this three and a half cheap shots out of five for the actual match because there was no interference or anything like that. It was just two guys beating the snot out of each other, telling a really good story as well uh, with Chris Jericho really you know, coming down on Jeff Hardy for all the high-flying that he does uh, needlessly sometimes. And um, Jericho picks up the win after the match. Christian would come down to, again, a ruptuous applause. Uh, they would start beating up Jeff Hardy, and none other than HBK would come down to make the save. Now, this is where the crowd just really batters HBK. Of course, HBK, the man that saw off their Canadian hero, Bret Hart, in 1997, the first time he set foot in Montreal for WWE since 1997. Uh, like I say, he makes the save, the gets the double DDT on Jericho and Christian. They roll out the ring and somehow, even though HBK is getting booed, the WWE managed to make Jericho the ultimate heel and HBK the ultimate face going into their match. At WrestleMania 19, which is an absolute barnstormer. Don't know how they do it, but only these two, because they are consummate professionals and know exactly how to work a crowd and how to use their characters to the best of their abilities. We then go into the back where Team Angle, Kurt Angle, Shelton Benjamin, Charlie Haas, all discussing their six man tag match tonight and Kurt Angle gives them a rousing speech about how the Canadians don't have any Olympic heroes and he's, he'll be damned if the, the first time that Team Angle team up together they're going to lose to a walking gorilla and two Canucks uh, of course their opponents are Benoit Lesnar I can't remember the third person in this match. That's, that's really annoying. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, but yes, it is uh, It is brilliant. It's a rousing speech. It does everything that it's meant to do in terms of get the crowd on their back. And... Uh, Oh, it's Edge. It's Edge, Benoit, and Lesnar. I knew I had it in there somewhere. It was in the head somewhere. Um, but yes, we lead up to that. So, going into the second match now. Continuing the No Way Out 2003 fun, we get Triple H and Evolution being shown arriving at the Bell Arena in their limousine. Of course, that is Triple H, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, Woo, and Batista. Just to give that little nod to what would happen by the end of the year. Steve Austin's truck is also shown parked in the background. Next match is World Tag Team Championships up for grabs and it is Lance Storm and William Regal the Un-Americans versus Kane and Rob Van Dam. Noted here that Kane and Rob Van Dam do enter separately into this match but have a 
chemistry between them that is absolutely it's really good actually brilliant in fact because you've got Kane who's the big big guy and then you've got Rob Van Dam who does all the kicks and stuff like that so it works and then they're going against William Regal and Lion Storm two technical powerhouses so you've then got a dynamic here that is absolutely I really enjoyed this match I'm going to say it um, you've got that uh, contrast of styles that works really well. Um, so this would obviously be the early days of the intertwining story of Kane being unmasked uh, later on in the year, of course. Um, but yeah, we get um, Rob Van Dam taking the onus early in this match with Landstorm. Landstorm would eventually tag in to Regal. Regal would um, continue to get beaten up by Kane. Kane, uh, sorry, get beaten up by RVD. Kane would then come in and perform a, a routine body slam. Um, and when they slowed this down, it does look nasty. It looks like William Regal hits his head off the canvas. It is real, it does hurt. And it can cause you issues. Obviously, uh, Regal does look like he's knocked a bit silly here. But he pulls himself together. Lance Storm gets the tag as uh, William Regal sits on the outside trying to get his bearings. RVD would continue with some more flippy stuff uh, after Kane would tag him in. And eventually this would backfire on him, hitting the... Uh, barricades on the outside as Lance Storm would uh, push him off the top rope onto the barricades and this would give Lance Storm and William Regal the edge and as it all breaks down we have um, RVD trying to uh, hit moves We've got Landstorm trying to hit moves. Regal then jumps on Kane's back, trying to uh, pull Kane, trying to take Kane out with a what looked like a routine sleeper hold, but would eventually lead to um, Kane's mask being turned around, and it would then be Storm who pushes. RVD into Kane and Kane just grabs out the first thing he sees uh, or not see not seen in this case and gives RVD a choke slam. At this point William Regal would crawl into the cover and pin RVD to retain the championships. I again I can say I really enjoyed this match. Uh, it was a good finish as well. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't screwy. It made sense because Kane wears the mask and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then subsequently after the match, it wasn't all hugs and oh, it's all right, man. RVD walks away from Kane. Kane then wondering why. Kane wondering what's going off because he couldn't see. Um, but yeah, the championships are retained on this occasion. Um, I'm going to give this match two and a half. Cheap shots out of five. Straight down the middle. I thought it was really good. Um, but it was a sort of... It was one of those middle matches where they don't get loads of time. But it's just enough to put out a good story and, and make things move on. So, like I say, again, moving on. Um, we get uh, Josh Matthews interviewing Matt Hardy. And I love everything about the set here in No Way Out. Because um, you've got the chains and they, they carry that on into the interview area in the back. Um, Matt Hardy explains that everyone should start making things happen by following Mattitude and how their lives can be so much better if they do so. Halfway through this interview, he spots his brother Jeff and he says, hold on a second and goes to give Jeff some advice of which Jeff cordially disagrees with. And gives his brother a big slap. Um, <laughs> Shannon Moore, the little mf -er, trying to stop Matt Hardy reacting to that. And uh, you know, thinking about his match 
with the Cruiserweight Championship coming up. So, yeah, we've got the Cruiserweight Championship match next. This is SmackDown exclusive. It is Billy Kidman, who is the champion, won the championship from Jamie Noble in 2002 at Survivor Series. And he's going against Matt Hardy, who is accompanied to the ring by Shannon Moore. And of course, the Mattitude era is well upon us here with the Matt Facts and Matt Hates Ice and Snow, along with Matt Takes Hot Tea with Milk and Sweetener. Things you would not get through life if you didn't know. Um, love Mattitude. I thought the version one of Matt Hardy was possibly his best character, um, including Woken and Broken. Because this one was just an extension of him. And it's just really funny. Um, and a sign of the times as well. Because you've got the little graphic and everything. I always had this as my entrance. As well on wrestling games. So that that's just a background of that. I always found it funny back in the day. And I absolutely find it hilarious now. So pre-match we've got Kidman as the face and we've got Matt Hardy as the heel if you didn't already know um yeah Matt Hardy worked hard to get down to the weight of 215 uh, for the cruiserweight division and uh, it does actually really come good here because um he's looking very lean he's doing some jumping jacks he's showing Billy Kidman that he can move about until Billy Kidman Hits him with a head scissors and throws him across the ring. Looks quite nasty. Looks like he lands on his head. But uh, he seems okay. Um, <clears throat> Matt Hardy, of course, coming in with slightly more power. Because he's coming in from the heavyweight division, so to speak. And, um, yeah, that, that pays off for him here uh, in... The long run, as well as having Shannon Moore out by ringside. Kidman is on top of most of this. And as you can expect, Shannon Moore does get involved several times throughout the match. Um, Kidman would hit the similar move to, Dudley Doug, to the Dudley Doug off of Shannon Moore as he climbs up onto the apron. Uh, using Shannon Moore as a springboard to drop Matt on his face. Near fall there. Um, we do get Matt Hardy coming back here. Matt, roll, Matt Hardy rolls away from the shooting star press, hits a twist of fate, and Billy Kidman kicks out. It is at this point where we get, I say, another surprise near fall. Matt... Then sets him up for a top rope suplex, superplex. Billy Kidman manages to knock Matt Hardy to the floor. Shannon Moore grabs Kidman's leg as he goes for the shooting star press. And Matt Hardy sets up for a super duper twist of fate on Billy Kidman to pick up the championship here. And I've got to say, it's a different kind of cruiserweight match, but it's still a good cruiserweight match really good really enjoyed this one and uh, had a time of around about nine and a half minutes um again really good match and there's nothing i can say bad about this one even the interference from shannon moore was well timed uh, and, and needed to f get the finish it was all leading up to Matt picking up the championship because of how much story they put into him making the weight in the first place. And uh, we get a new a new champion here. Um, so I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five. Not quite as good as the first match. A little bit better than the second match. But uh, yeah, straight down the middle again. Again... Props to Billy Kidman, brilliant in telling this story with Matt Hardy and Matt Hardy just being Matt Hardy, really, really good. Um, 
And uh, yeah, they celebrate in the ring. Matt Hardy with his little mf -er, or Mattitude follower, as it were. And uh, yeah, he goes on to WrestleMania to defend the Cruiserweight Championship against Rey Mysterio at the biggest show of them all. So we get a backstage scene after this match where there's a lot of backstage segments. A backstage scene after this match where Edge appears to have been attacked by some unknown entity. He is lying face down in a blue bin, a blue bin, and uh, Chris Benoit is screaming at him. Brock Lesnar's walking around like, what's happening? Uh, Stephanie McMahon's there, we've got the EMTs, they're really panicking. Is there going to be an injury to Edge? And is he going to be able to make the main event? Who knows? Only time will tell as we continue No Way Out. So moving on next, we get another Smackdown bout. It is The Undertaker versus Big Show with Paul Heyman. And of course, Big Show comes out with his agent, Paul Heyman, who is basically screaming all the way through the match. It's also the first match big enough to get a video package of what's been going down between The Undertaker and The Big Show, showing all these um, <clears throat> presents that The Big Show has sent The Undertaker throughout the, um, throughout the process of this feud. And, uh, yeah, it, it was interesting. <laughs> like, um, there was puppies, there was uh, singing telegrams and all that kind of stuff as well. It was really quite weird. Um, all to say they sorry. I mean, The Undertaker didn't accept his apology. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, Obviously, don't need to explain that The Undertaker is well and truly face here with The Big Show being heel just by the point that he's coming out with um, Paul Heyman, really. And uh, that is that. So, yeah. So, in the early going, uh, we get drop kicks from Undertaker to try and take out Big Show early on. Um, with uh, Undertaker eventually shoving uh, Big, Sh Big Show out of the way and also the referee out of the way because he just wants to get on with it and try and uh, hit Big Show with everything to take him down. Taker goes for a slam, but Show uh, landed on him at one point as uh, the battle continues. Um, Big Show absolutely dominating The Undertaker. And uh, the suplex goes well for the big show on The Undertaker. Um, they announced that Edge has been taken to a local medical facility. And, um, you know, it's... Um, there's probably going to be a change in the main event for the night. Uh, Undertaker breaks out of a bear hug and uh, goes for the run and tries to take out Big Show again after the punches, but walks into a side slam. Uh, Taker is bleeding from the head, from all the headbutts and things that the Big Show has hit him with. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, at least that one, that's what it looks like anyway, with Big Show doing the same. <laughs> And bleeding from the top of his head. So Taker hits a leaping clothesline after being beaten up for a good long while with lots of headbutts and stalling moves. Undertaker goes for the old school and hits old school. Goes for the choke slam, uh, but gets shoved out of the way, leading to the referee getting hit as well, which gives Undertaker a chance to kick Big Show squarely in the nuts for the... Uh, for the first time and only time in this match goes for another choke slam as well um, but uh, doesn't get it instead goes for a leaping DDT and a nice two count uh, leading to take a calling for the last ride as if 
he was going to do that. So shoves him into the ropes and hits him with a spine buster, a massive spine buster. Show goes into the turnbuckle with the snake eyes and uh, Big Show tries to pick up the Undertaker. So Undertaker puts him in a dragon sleeper as Paul Heyman is trying to distract the referee. Um, he does get distracted. Undertaker gets distracted, tries to take out Paul Heyman, goes back to the Big Show. Uh, a train comes out as Taker hits the ropes. He then does a flying uh, Undertaker plancher thingy and uh, absolutely brilliant. Really gets a pop from the Undertaker this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, he hits A train with this, but Paul Heyman goes down as well and uh, gives. A train another smack to the face as uh, he gets up to finish the Undertaker off. Um, Big Show goes to hit a choke slam and gets two one two. And Taker takes a reversed uh, triangle choke, otherwise known as well. He would adapt this to become the Hell's Gate later on, um, but yes, a triangle choke and. Uh, Big Show passes out. Really good match, this one. Really enjoyed this one. And uh, the finish was excellent, as you'd expect from two veterans. Um, I'm going to take away half a cheap shot because of how much interference there was. Paul Heyman was out at ringside. That should have been, that should have been it, really. There's obviously a bit that needed hitting and a train perhaps didn't make his cue on time so i don't know but that's possible what happens it does happen it's live tv or live show depending on how you are involved in wrestling so it does happen but yeah you can only think that they did it the first time and it didn't work, so the second time they tried it again, and that's where the A-Train came out. So, um, yeah, like I say, I'm going to take away half a cheap shot for, for not for the botched finish, I don't like the word botch anyway, uh, even though I do watch Botchmania and do find it quite funny. Uh, I'm going to give this one two and a half cheap shots out of five, it's exactly what you'd expect from these two. Big Show's looking decent here as well, um, showing that he is a giant and he is a force, which he wasn't being a, he wasn't able to do for a long time. So it's nice to see him be Big Show, and Undertaker's just Undertaker, just awesome, absolutely awesome. And of course, that would then lead to uh WrestleMania for the Undertaker and Big Show and A Train and an unknown source as well. So we move on now to the next match. So we move on next to another backstage segment featuring Eric Bischoff if in his karate gear and he's talking with Chief Morley and Vince McMahon turns up um, because he says that tonight, after seeing Bischoff's karate demonstration, he says tonight that it's going to be a match between the greatest karate champion the world has ever seen and the toughest SOB the WWE has ever seen. However, Vince McMahon, being Vince McMahon, says that if anybody... And he does mean anybody looking at Chief Sean Morley interferes in this match. They will be fired on the spot. Eric Bischoff looks dishevelled, looks dejected and quite badly for him because he's come up with some good stuff and he's been making WWE really good from 2002 to 2003 and beyond. Um, ex exceptional, in fact. But we we move on. We move on to the six man tag match, which is not a six man tag match because 
Edge was taken out and taken to a local medical facility. Team Angle come out together with Paul Heyman. And um, we go on to this match. It is a handicap match. They were given the opportunity to pick a partner. Kurt Ang uh, sorry, Chris Benoit and Brock Lesnar. Given the opportunity to pick a partner, they chose not to. They said, let's go it alone. And it is now Kurt Angle, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin with Paul Heyman versus Brock Lesnar and Chris Benoit. As you can imagine, lots of wrestling holes to start with. Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle start in the ring. And um, yeah, this this is a bit of a tussle. This is like reversals of reversals and... And then into more reversals. It's I always love watching Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit in the ring. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, as soon as he gets the tag to you, Brock Lesnar, of course, that's when things start picking up. He just plows through everybody. Uh, just big moves, really quick as well. No matter how many times the team Angle come in, Charlie Harsh, Benjamin, Kurt Angle, and no matter how many times they come in try and take him out, Brock Lesnar's there. He's ready to get. Um, this one does break down uh, quite early on and it gets uh, disbanded quickly and then starts again. Um, but basically, the story is, in this match, I believe, from what I saw, the story is between Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. They've got a massive history. The other story being told here is obviously that Brock Lesnar does have a meal ticket booked for WrestleMania against Kurt Angle. So, yeah, this one's this one's huge. Um, Brock comes in, gives everyone belly-to-belly -belly suplexes, Chris Benoit, German suplexes, and it would come to uh, an end when... Brock Lesnar was sent out of the ring. Kurt Angle already out of the ring. Saved by Shelton Benjamin. I say saved. He was on the shoulders for the F5. Shelton Benjamin drop kicked Brock Lesnar. And Angle, and, and Angle ended up on the outside with um, Shelton Benjamin and Brock Lesnar towards the end. Kurt, uh, Chris Benoit gets another German suplex and transitions into the... Crossface, uh, Charlton Benjamin tries to make the save, does, Chris Benoit manages to get the crossface on again, Brock Lesnar comes in, scoops Kurt Angle up, who also tries to come in with the, uh, with the title, and scoops him up, F5s him, Charlie Haas does tap out, Chris Benoit gets the win in this one, which is, Brilliant, because it makes him relevant to the title picture still. Absolutely brilliant booking here. And I've got to say that this was... Well, I mean, they've all been fantastic matches so far. And this one's definitely a three and a half cheap shots out of five contender. Because it is absolutely brilliant. It gets people ready for... The next two matches, which would be the main events, essentially, um, with Triple H versus uh, Big Pop Pump Scott Steiner, coming straight after this. The crowd was totally into the match the whole time, uh, and especially with it being two on three, you know what to expect here. Lots of cheating from the heel team. And uh, the referee sort of losing control. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, another <laughs> another video package coming up next. Featuring the World Heavyweight Championship. And um, Triple H defending the championship against Scott Steiner. A rematch. From the Royal Rumble, which wasn't great, but you can tell that Scott Steiner has been working on things 
between the two shows. So, yeah, lots of heavy hitting here from Scott Steiner. Um, Triple H comes from uh, the back with Ric Flair. Nowhere to be seen are the other two members of Evolution. Um, and Triple H's got the bandage around his, around his thigh. So that ultimately would be a target for Scott Steiner. He does sit back in the Steiner recliner. There's lots of wooing going on. Uh, Triple H hits the everything he can. There's a chance of boring in this match. I thought this match was okay, much better than the Royal Rumble match, which Triple H carried. Scott Steiner did more in this match. Um, El Hebner not letting, not giving in. Yeah, so the leg became an absolute target for Scott Steiner in this match. Uh, like I say, it was better than the Royal Rumble match. It wasn't, still wasn't great uh, in terms of how things go. And people tre- cheering Triple H as how much they don't like Steiner. Um, and Evolution gets sent to the back, even though they're just waiting on the stage. I feel like this match was overbooked for what it was I feel like it could have carried without the overbooking uh, because of Scott Steiner's improvement since Royal Rumble Uh, he certainly didn't look as dangerous as he did at the Royal Rumble Uh, but in terms of this match it was just okay with Triple H working with what he needs to work with and uh, getting through it so uh, yeah I'm going to give this one a one and a half cheap shots out of five it wasn't great it wasn't completely terrible but it was much better than the Royal Rumble match that they had so yeah one and a half cheap shots out of five we're going to move on to the next match we move on now uh, after that match to another non-match <clears throat> well I can't call the last match a non-match because it, it did actually involve wrestling but this one absolutely doesn't we see Eric Bischoff walking towards the ring in his full karate gear uh, past all of the superstars who are jeering and cheering him and uh, and basically saying Austin's going to kick your ass and uh, so he did. Um, yeah, Eric Bischoff's not obviously not happy about this because a lot of them are his brand of superstar. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah a bit of a throwaway. This it's purely to bring Stone Cold Steve Austin back to the fray of uh, wrestling of WWE after he took his ball and went home. So Eric Bischoff walks down to the ring for stomping to the ring, really confident as you wouldn't expect from him. And, um, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> well, that's after, sorry, we get a surprise return and we hear the Oklahoma Boomer music. Boomer sooner, as it were. Uh, JR, good old JR, comes down to the ring uh, to for commentary after Eric Bischoff humiliated him. And, uh, yeah, it, he's... Bigging up Stone Cold Steve Austin in only only a way that JR could possibly do. Um, Stone Cold then makes his way out to the ring to a rapturous applause. Not even dressed to wrestle. He just comes down to kick ass and leave, which is exactly what he does. Arrive, destroy everything and leave. Including Eric Bischoff after maybe three or four Stone Cold stunners. Uh, and including one... After the match, because he'd got all the way to the top and then ran all the way back down to the ring just to give him another one. Because, hey, people are, people are rupturous for it. It's uh, rapturous for it. It's, uh, it's just one of those things. They're happy to see Stone Cold back. Like WrestleMania last year, it was uh, really cool to see Stone Cold back at this point in time. Of course, it wouldn't be too long before he would retire uh, for a good long time, actually, um, about 19 years, which is crazy 
crazy, isn't it? It was WrestleMania 19 after his match with The Rock, which we're moving on to next in our classic pay-per-view reviews. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to give this one cheap shot out of five. It was entertaining as hell, but it wasn't really what you would call a wrestling match. And unfortunately, this seems to be a product of the last fi final three matches because we move on to The Rock versus Hulk Hogan next. Rock Hogan 2 should have been absolutely brilliant after the first match that they had. Unfortunately, again, screwy. So the The Rock came back from Hollywood after his, I would say... I mean, it worked out for him, but it definitely wasn't triumphant. It was uh, his movie, The Scorpion King, that he went off to film. Uh, how he got more work after that, I don't know. Probably because he had all the charisma, but the writing was absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, so he comes back as Hollywood rock. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic and uh, love that character, love the music that he comes out to. They've slowed down the rocks doon -tsh, doon -doon -tsh, um, to something a bit more fitting for a Hollywood superstar. And obviously Hollywood Hulk Hogan, you know, it's Hollywood Rock versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's gone back to the red and gold of old and... Uh, yeah, we're expecting something good here, but unfortunately, there's another screwy finish. Vince McMahon gets involved in this one and causes the the uh, causes Hulk Hogan to lose the match. The lights go out. Um, Hulk Hogan wondering wondering what's happening, and uh, yeah, Vince McMahon comes out and. Uh, causes the screwy finish so yes it's a shame because this match obviously should have been really good rock hogan won at wrestlemania 18 was probably my favorite match on that card and it was a stacked card but this one fell short like the two matches in front of it the whole of the main event card for this event was really disappointing and it's, it's leading up to WrestleMania. You wouldn't expect it to be happening, would you? But it did. Uh, I'm going to give this one a bit more of a, a, a cheap shot rating. I'm going to give it two cheap shots out of five. Again, with the screw finish, wasn't really a match. They, they were both over, but it just wasn't what it could have been. And it was all set up to start a feud between Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon over who owned WrestleMania, who made WrestleMania, who who made Hulkamania. Uh, an intriguing storyline because, you know, they both came along at the same time, roughly. It was Hulk Hogan that main evented most, if not all, of WrestleManias that he was in up until WrestleMania 9. Uh, and then when he came back, he was... Semi main event, world champion again, you know, um, and he was he's a huge superstar. Um, and The Rock, well, what can you say about The Rock? He's just awesome, isn't he? Doesn't matter how long he's been away, he can come back and just light the place on fire just with the start of his music. <clears throat> so there you go. That is No Way Out two thousand and two. Um, Bit of a weird pay-per-view um, in terms of the quality of the matches uh, because, I mean, it was just here, or here, there and everywhere. It just wasn't a lead-up, the lead-up to WrestleMania 19 that you'd want. That being said, they did make up for it at WrestleMania 19. One of my favourite pay-per-views. Turned into arc right there. One of my very favourite pay-per-views of all time. And it was the point where it started going from three hours to four hours. They started getting bigger crowds. Started getting bigger venues. And it that's where it started really exploding. You know, and uh, 
yeah, we're moving on to that next. So if you've watched No Way Out 2003, not 2002, 2003, um, recently, let me know what you thought of it, because it was indifferent for me. I still enjoyed it, as I always do with the old old school reviews. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm, looking re- I'm really looking forward to WrestleMania 19 because uh, I've got some things planned to go alongside it, some podcasts with wrestlers that I work with uh, to find out what their favourite WrestleManias are and talk about those. And so check out the podcast on, uh, it's only on, it's on uh, Spotify, uh, Talk is Cheap, and also on uh, Facebook, Talk is Cheap, and we've got the uh, group there as well. So <clears throat> yeah, and Cheap Shot Entertainment, that's where you're listening to this, and also it will be available on on the uh, podcast as well, Talk is Cheap. So yeah, that is it. Uh, we move on to WrestleMania that will be coming on the 30th of March. So we've got a good long wait in between. Uh, hope you enjoy all of your wrestling goodness. Go and find yourself a local show to go and watch because you will not regret it at all. Uh, you know, wrestling's not just a TV show. Go and watch it. Go and support the people who put on the matches, who, who work tirelessly to learn their craft and do everything to keep you guys entertained. There's got to be a flow of talent from somewhere. And, uh, yeah, your local wrestling show will provide that. I've been your host, Luke. You are the Cheap Shot Nation. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Yeah.